Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Money Moves. I go over the news articles that are impacting the markets today. And first up, AstraZeneca finally gets approved. Mitch McConnell blocks the $2,000 stimulus checks as President Trump makes demands on tech and election investigations. And finally here, the 737 MAX finally got approved and started flying again. Then I will go over each of my investing accounts, starting with Worthy Bonds. Then I will very quickly talk about Lending Club. Then I will talk about a new addition to the investment portfolio. This is called Ground Floor. Then I will briefly talk about some of the dramatic changes going on with Fundrise. Then I will move on to my buy and hold long stock positions in my retirement account, as well as my retire account and my higher yield savings account with M1 Finance. Then I will finish up my investments with my Robinhood portfolio, as well as my Tastyworks portfolio. Then I will go over my bi-weekly tracker. And lastly, for this episode, there will be some jelly at the end, which is something I enjoyed outside of the markets. If you have big dreams of owning this five bed, seven bath mansion in Barrington, New Hampshire, or if you're just getting started on your financial journey, definitely like and subscribe. It includes your own personal sauna and quite a bit of land. It's currently on sale for $7 million, although I'm not sure how you drive right through this tree to leave. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So AstraZeneca finally gets the nod of approval in the UK. This is pretty significant because there were concerns with their trials that they did have a few mishaps where they didn't follow through with the proper procedures and they ended up giving a half dose to a few individuals on the first dose and a full dose on the second. And those individuals actually saw better results than the people that got a full dose for the first and second dosings. As a result, there was a little bit of a concern that they wouldn't see approval or they might have to do another trial. But the UK finally followed through and approved their vaccine. And their vaccine is about four times cheaper than Moderna or Pfizer at around three to four dollars per dose, which is pretty significant when you're talking about tens of millions or hundreds of millions of doses. This vaccine seems like it will be putting the final nail in the Rona coffin pending its distribution. Also, this vaccine didn't have the same restrictions as the Pfizer vaccine in terms of temperature, which further allows it to be more widespread than that vaccine specifically. Next up, there's a lot of politics going on with the stimulus checks right now. They did pass a bill that allowed for the payment of $600 per individual, but President Trump said he wants $2,000 per individual, and the House very quickly passed a bill that approved that notion, as Democrats wanted more payments out to individuals already. However, Mitch McConnell tied the Senate version of the bill to Section 230, which is a legal liability that protects social networking platforms primarily and allows them the protections of a platform, despite the fact that they often act as publishers and censor certain content. The fact that Mitch McConnell tied these two things together, even though they are unrelated, is kind of a smart move for them. They want this section removed which would make it significantly more difficult for social media giants to sustain the way they do business. And they would pretty dramatically have to either reduce the way that they censor content and allow it to be a true open platform, or they would be legally liable for everything said on the platform, which would basically be impossible the way it's set up right now. I'm not sure why the Democrats are not on board with removing this section. They often feel that these platforms are either not doing enough to censor content so they should just become publishers if that's the case, which removing this section would force them to do so. Or if they remove the legal liability, then they would be forced to be true open platforms. Democrats and Republicans basically could not attack these platforms anymore because they're allowing more content and they would be completely removed from the censorship difficulties that they continue to put themselves in. So to me, it seems kind of like a win-win for both parties and for the American people in terms of getting $2,000 stimulus checks, but we'll still have to wait and see how this plays out. The way it seems right now, I don't think the Democrats are going to compromise with this Section 230 removal, and therefore we will not get the $2,000 checks. And lastly, the FAA finally approves the 737 MAX. After almost two years of review, the airliner was approved for flight and took its first commercial flight just a few days ago. Just to quickly recap a little bit of this story, there were two deadly crashes that killed 346 people. B-52 
because Boeing put some software in these planes without telling the pilots, and because the pilots were unaware of it, they also did not know how to override the system, and it caused the planes to nose down unexpectedly around takeoff or landing, which ultimately caused these two crashes. Now, there's a number of reasons for this, partially because the FAA was trusting Boeing to do a lot of its own testing and approvals. And there's a number of reasons for this, and I may make another video that goes into depth on this whole scenario again. But the bottom line is Boeing was checking a lot of its own systems and they weren't disclosing some of the technologies that they were adding to this plane, which ultimately led to two crashes and almost two years of grounding for this airline. And that on top of the Rona situation has been pretty detrimental to Boeing. Plus they have a significant number of back on a few others of their airliners which they haven't been able to keep up with production due in part to the Rona and because of the 737 review. And the Rona seems to be coming to a close. Boeing might finally be a buy. Moving on to my investments, starting with worthy bonds. I continue to withdraw the interest every single month. I did withdraw the interest yesterday for this month. And you can see I have one day of interest here. I don't want to hold any more bonds in my portfolio than I have right now. So I continue to take this money out and move it into different investments. But if you want a bond that pays 5% and is asset backed, there is a link in the description that will get you one free bond when you fund your account. Moving on to my Lending Club portfolio. This is what the Invest tab looks like now. Because Lending Club ended its peer-to-peer -peer platform and retail investors can no longer invest in individual notes. If you have an IRA with them like I do, you can now withdraw your money into an IRA established by Lending Club with Services Trust Co. If you call them, they will give you your account number and then you can move that money over to any other IRA that you would like. This is kind of an annoying process, but this is the only way to get your money out of your Lending Club IRA and into another account that allows you to invest it. Otherwise, you basically just have to wait for all of this money to be uninvested. However, my taxable account continues to do well, returning over 11%. And my IRA with Lending Club continues to do outstandingly well at almost 50%. Next up, moving on to my new investment called Ground Floor. This investment is kind of similar to Lending Club in the way that you are investing in debt of other people. But this debt is specifically being used to buy homes that are undervalued, do renovations on that home and then sell the home for much more than what they purchased it for. And once that work is complete and the home is sold back, then you receive your investment at the fixed rate that is agreed to upon funding. So you can see here I have $560 currently invested in 20 different loans with an expected rate of return of just over 10%. And you can see that is expected to return me $46.04. This is a little bit less than 10% if you do some quick math because not all of this money has been fully committed yet. It's similar to Lending Club in that the loans must be fully funded before they are paid out. So that hasn't taken place for all of this money quite yet. And then I should see this number go up, assuming that there are no defaults. They also do a note system with qualities the same way Lending Club did. So they have B, C, and D notes right now, and they have different rates of return. I'm not being very picky right now as I'm investing in as many notes as they offer. There aren't as many notes as were on Lending Club, so you can't be quite as picky. I figure diversification is my friend, and I just want to invest in as many notes as I can. So I'm doing pretty small dollar amounts at around $30 per loan, just to get my foot in the door and get spread out across as many loans as I can. Here you can see some of these investments. This is a place in Jacksonville, Florida. As I mentioned, it is a purchase and renovation. They're paying a 10% rate for just over seven months. Valuation is 75% of what they think they're going to be able to sell it for. The payment is deferred, which means it should be paid at the end. Currently over a thousand people have invested, loan amount, how much time is remaining until they are fully funded. And then you can see I put in $30 into this note. And you can click on this here and it will take you to see a little bit more about the property value and some of the factors that affect them. If this investment seems interesting to you, of course, they have a referral program where we will each get $10 when you fund your account. Moving on to my Fundrise account, you can see we're getting pretty close to that $30,000 level, which is pretty exciting. It still thinks I need to get back on track 
And looking at this portfolio overview, it still has my midpoint above that $500,000 goal. So I'm not sure how this is working yet. It may need some fine tuning by them, or maybe they go off of this low estimate just to make sure that you do hit your goal. Next up, I want to briefly mention the fact that they are introducing the Fundrise Real Estate Interval Fund. This is going to become their new flagship fund, as they mentioned here, with greater diversification, lower costs, and improved liquidity, which is something they have been penalized for because this was viewed as such a long-term investment. I plan to do a year-end roll-up for Fundrise, where I will talk about this in much, much more detail. But the key takeaways here are they are improving liquidity, where you can withdraw money quarterly without any penalties based on when you funded your account. And anybody with investments with Fundrise already will have some of their money go into this new portfolio, which will give them some liquidity and access to this money. Moving on to my retirement account, there's not a ton to say here. I've kept the same allocations as the last few episodes. I continue to add money on the second of every month, and that money is automatically dispersed based on this current allocation. And this is my current distribution. So you can see my goal here is to own more stock in this portfolio. Over the past 12 months, my rate of return is just over 16%, uh, which is pretty consistent with the overall markets. Moving on to my M1 Retire account, you can see over the past month, it's done pretty well, up over 3% and just over $30 in dividends. Market has been fairly flat, but we finished right on those highs today. I have a little bit of cash on the side. This will get invested once it hits that $25 mark. And then looking at the holdings here, you can see everything is up except for utilities and telecom, which fortunately are my two smallest holdings. Overall, tech and finance have been leading the way with industrials coming in pretty closely behind. I'm a little bit unsure whether I will maintain this account going forward as I've done pretty well with options. And some of the holdings I have in this account are the same stocks that I'm trading options on. So it seems like it would make sense to move this capital over there where I can use it to trade options on the same stocks, which in my opinion tends to outperform. Moving on to my higher yield savings account also continues to do well. I received a pretty large amount of dividends in this portfolio this month at over $83 and it's up 1.41%. I had a pretty big disbursement today of just over $50, which was all reinvested. And over the past month, you can see stocks have been up. Bonds are even up a little bit. And overall, the value funds have been doing pretty well. And corporate debt was down a little bit. Leading the way is IDV, which is an international dividend fund, which got pretty beat down in the Rona. And I picked it up for pretty cheap. And it has recovered nicely, as it looks like the Rona is going to be complete pretty soon. You can see that purchase that I made today, a little bit over $55, and all of that money went into dividend ETFs, which is in line with my goal to reduce my overall bond holdings. Moving on to my Robinhood account, I'm up almost $1,000 in the past month, which is a little bit over 11.5%. Most of my positions here are pretty small account positions in terms of trading options, you want to follow along with my options portfolios i do a specific video for those so definitely like and subscribe if you want to follow along otherwise you can just take a look at the different options that i have in this portfolio my largest holding in this right now is lululemon which is down quite a bit from its highs and i think we're going to recover before we hit this 340 dollars level moving on to my tastyworks portfolio you may see here that i have opened a Roth IRA with Tastyworks, and this is where I'm gonna move that IRA from Lending Club to, and that way I will be able to either buy and hold long stock or trade options with that money. We'll see what I end up doing, but either way, it's gonna be an IRA. So the same rules that apply with an IRA with Lending Club or any other broker will apply here, but I will have better access to it with Tastyworks's superior broker platform, in my opinion. Otherwise, I have my individual taxable account here, which is doing quite well, just over 31,000 with a $444 profit just today. You can see it was a green day today, almost completely across the board, except for Microsoft, Snow, and Yeti. But these were pretty small dips and I'm not losing very much money on those, with Snow being my largest loss right now. Otherwise, the other position that I'm defending a little bit here is Beyond Meat my put price being $125 and the stock sitting at $126. I still think Beyond Meat is a buy right here at this price point, but it's one of the stocks that I have to keep an eye on. Another one to mention here is TTCF or Tattooed Chef, which is a competitor to Beyond Meat, and this company is growing rapidly. 
Again, if you want to know more about my options positions, definitely like and subscribe so you can see my options portfolio overviews where I go into significantly more detail on individual option positions and strategy. Lastly, for talking money here, you can see my biweekly tracker. A little bit more than two weeks on this one. I try to do it around the 1st and the 15th of every month. So I'm a little early for this one, but because my last one was on the 13th, I felt obligated to get it out a little bit early. You can see stocks continue to trend up. Some of this is added money and some of it is market gains. Trading accounts continue to grow faster than the rest of the markets, which is great. Again, I added a little bit of cash to this as well as its own organic growth. Bonds continue to trend downwards slowly, which is good for me, even though I did include ground floor in bonds because they are investing in interest bearing notes, which are paid back at the end of the term, which is basically the definition of a bond. Uh, but even with that, they are trending down. REITs continue to grow, which is great. This is some market growth and then adding to fund rise. And then Lending Club continues to downtrend as it will until it is basically empty. I'll have to make a decision at some point what I'm going to do with tracking Lending Club. Still a pretty large dollar value, but eventually it will go away. And then cash was basically flat for this section. I spent just about as much as I made, whether it was investments or holiday shopping. But this cash is still a little bit heavy and I will continue to look for investments to get my cash number down to between eight and nine thousand. Looking at the percentages here, you can see bonds are trending down as you would expect. Lending Club is trending down and everything else is trending up, which is great and in line with my goals. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of the new AstraZeneca vaccine, as well as what Mitch McConnell is going to do with the new two thousand dollar stimulus check bill. Do you have any thoughts on the 737 MAX getting back in the air? And will Boeing see significant upside from here as it's down around 50% from its all-time highs? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Of course, this is not financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. And with that, let's get to today's jelly. Today's jelly is a little bit different from previous weeks. Normally, I pick a video or something specific, but... This week, I want to talk about Doug DeMiro. He has a pretty popular YouTube channel. As you can see, he has significant amount of views here on every single one of these videos, but he does car reviews, whether it's consumer cars or very special cars like the McLaren P1 GTR or the Bugatti Devo, which is an $8 million hypercar. I'm not sure if he does this on purpose or if it's just getting called Doug DeMiro December or Doug Sember for short. But he had a huge amount of very cool cars this month from the Aston Martin Vanquish shooting brake Devo, which I already mentioned, the new electric Mustang, whatever this weird truck thing is, plus the Bugatti Veyron. And as I mentioned, the McLaren P1 GTR, which is an outstandingly rare, very fast special car. These videos are very detailed and pretty funny. He's a pretty quirky guy. So if you like any of these cars or if there's any cars you're interested in, definitely check out his channel. But that's it for the jelly. Let me know down in the comments section if you like Doug DeMiro's channel, if you already know about his channel and some of the best videos you think he's made. Definitely like and subscribe before you go and have a great day.